uh, is the course just about completely set up, or can we uh, close this thing down? All our marshals are out there. I think they're looking real good. With everything in place, the second to last day of racing got underway on a damp and gloomy day. The women raced four laps of the infamous course known as the Morgul Bismarck. 53 miles of unrelenting hills, a challenge to legs that were already heavy with fatigue. Rebecca Twig Whitehead initiated a breakaway that would also include 7-Eleven's Bunky Bunkitis Davis and Susan Ellers. Whitehead dug deep inside herself to find the form that won her the classic overall title in 1983 as she left her competition behind in the demanding uphill sprint they call the wall. That's it, she's done it! Rebecca Twig Whitehead! When the women finished, the men still had half of their 106-mile race to go. The day was miserable, and it was deteriorating. As the clouds lowered, the drizzle became rain, and the temperature was dropping. The Morgul Bismarck would exact its annual toll on the racers. It's, it's sort of funny how it's almost always some extreme weather condition. It's always either very hot, or it's raining, and it's cold. And uh, I don't know, I think that, you know, the the gods must have something to do with this day. <laughs> it is this course that so few riders cherish. I tell you, I, this is, I really hate this race. I just I hate it. Despite the damp chill, the men's race heated up. Ron Kiefel rode like a man possessed, but he could not escape this man, Paolo Rosola, the Italian who had already won three stages of this year's classic. In their final battle up the grueling wall, Rosola powered by Kiefel for the win. It's just so frightful. Just, you know, chasing and jumping and attacking that. Going up the wall, my legs just exploded. Every racer faced the cold and the hills and the struggle to finally cross the finish line. For most, the end did not come soon enough. And it's on to the Morgul Bismarck. Perhaps the most challenging race the women will contest, and it is the pride of Ketchum, Idaho, Katrin Tobin, all alone at the finish. Tobin is the best rider of the day, but she is humbled by Morgul Bismarck. After six stages, Inga Benedict holds a one-minute lead over Madonna Harris. Bonkaitis Davis, 6.48 behind. The riders will need all the nourishment they can get today because we're just outside Boulder for the Morgul Bismarck Road Race. A day to make sure everything is right because this is a championship course. will be all over it today. And who are the main players today? 7-Eleven, and why are they smiling? Because it's just another day at the office for the team in control of this race. As always, Alexi Graywall will be most aggressive. He has won at Morgul Bismarck, and at 2 minutes 20 seconds behind, he's looking to challenge Davis Finney today. Finney has not won Morgul Bismarck. They used to say he was just a sprinter, but no more. Today, we find out. It's a 13.2 mile course. They will go more than 100 miles. And as always, there's an early breakaway. No shade on this course. It is relentlessly attacking on the riders. They will drink water all day. And riders like Mike Engelman of the Wheaties Schwinn team who gets away early, can only hope the others are just as tired.
vast descents on the Morgul Bismarck. Where there are descents, there are also climbs. The lead men push hard because on a day like today, if none of them are contenders for the race lead, maybe the pack will let them stay away. And the heat is as much a picture as a feeling. What's this? Spectators! And they didn't even buy tickets. Ron Kiefel almost won this race last year. The Colombians may be climbers, and Mike Zanoli of Holland is a sprinter. Today, he tries to do all of it, because the Morgul Bismarck challenges you every which way. They climb the wall eight times, a steep grade that will make the rider's thighs sear with pain. rider in this course classic but he has not won a stage victory and today the Morgul Bismarck will test every rider there is no shade on Morgul Bismarck the riders will drink constantly and still their tongues will be dry Bismarck is named for a cat and a dog. The riders have stronger names for it. Alexi Graywall marked by the 7-Eleven men. Graywall won here several years ago. This is his last chance to pick up time and maybe end up in third place when the race ends. Andy Hampton's last chance as well to pick up overall time. What does Morgul Bismarck do to a rider? Take a look. Now the definitive breakaway. They were as many as 10 minutes ahead, then eight, then six, then five. Mike Engelman, a rider who likes to get away alone up front, is riding with the others because no one can go it alone on Morgul Bismarck. Gogolski of Team Crest pulling the chasers along, trying to bring his team closer. And the red jersey of Davis Finney, secure in the pack. Graywall now pushing up the climb with Gogolski in his wake. Hampton is right behind as well. Jasjeet Graywall, Alexi's father, watches, hoping his son has enough. But it will not be enough because Mike Engelman is the rider who climbs the wall alone to another solo victory. Team Weedy Schwinn obviously ate enough today. comes in fourth. He holds on to the Red Race Leader's jersey. And for Alexi Graywall, a superhuman effort against the most powerful team. But it has gotten him nowhere. And Davis Finney has faced his toughest ride. Yeah, I guess I'd say so. I mean, when you have to have the, when you have to pr protect the lead, which I never was really protecting until today. <laughs> but uh, we just, this has been a really good race, really competitive race, and uh, you know, I think 7-Eleven has ridden a tremendous race, and I think Crest has ridden a tremendous race. 
and uh, you know it's been really enjoyable but it's not over it's not over a really great effort is a really great effort that's all there is to it these guys did a great job they've done a great job the whole way we're the second best team in the United States 7-Eleven is one of the best teams in the world so you know these guys are good when did you guys decide to attack three weeks ago <laughs> how about today's race three weeks ago <laughs> One more day for Greywall to attack. Davis Finney with the points leader jersey and the red race leader jersey. Firmly in control of the Coors Classic with one day to go. After stage 14, Davis Finney, Andy Hampton, Alex Steele, it's all 7-Eleven.